We are doing a workshop for inseminators that seeks to begin to change a little bit the way of taking them to learn a little bit about the insemination technique, about the insemination process in the farms and for them to recognize the most common failures that are committed in the progress, with what purpose. The purpose of this is to seek that the farms have optimal reproduction rates, that they have acceptable reproduction levels and become more profitable at the end of the day, many times farms have reproductive problems and begin to look for and there are thousands of factors that can be included for the cow to get pregnant or not, so when we do these types of workshops, these types of talks with the inseminators, we seek to minimize some of those factors, we try to minimize some of those. From our part, which is the reproductive part, we try to ensure that the inseminators handle an adequate insemination technique and an adequate heat traction so that this part is covered in a certain way and then when the reproductive problem arises on the farm, they already know that they have that side covered, they do not have to look for it because they are fine in that sense. What we do on the farms is called retraining, Basically what we do is gather the inseminators that are on the farm and all the personnel that work with the cows, when we gather them the first thing we do is a survey to find out how they are handling the issue of heat detection, which is why we gather them all together, the inseminator answers a lot of the parts of the insemination survey, but all the rest of the people that work on the farm answer about heat detection because it is a subject. That concerns them all, so we bring them all together. We do that survey and with that survey we make a kind of diagnosis of what are the most common faults that occur in that farm or the faults that must be urgently improved, then through that survey we realize that we must emphasize the talk that follows after it. The talk then focuses on correcting the inseminator and the people and the faults that we find in a survey. The benefit also depends a lot on how the person takes it right, we have found in the middle many people who are a little closed to what you ask them, many say, I have inseminated a long time ago, so they do not want to correct, they do not want to change their technique right, but the idea is that a person begins to reflect and come to their farms with a little different mentality thinking, if we have such faults, we can correct them on this side, where we have the company's advice, we can. Access those resources the company is providing us with, the way people start to think a little bit and change their way of thinking and open up a little bit towards that change, towards that improvement of the insemination processes. So the idea with these talks is precisely that they become a little more open and calmer to accept these changes, to believe that these changes will actually benefit them instead of harming them, which is the fear of everyone people have been doing everything in one way and believe that when one proposes a way to do better what they will do is get worse. So this way we want people to change that mentality a little and open up a little to these changes precisely to improve everything that has to do with the reproductive part on the farms. We have found many cases of people who do not have access to this training. who do not have it and are still far behind because the person is changing as he, she goes through these trainings. One usually complains a lot about the environment. He says that the farmer is very closed or that the cattlemen are very closed and all that is true. We can complain or we can start working to change all that, because that is what we are doing at the moment, starting to propose changes to improve. This is a very important day for us as a company and for our clients. It is the meeting of 11 years of work in technical support to cattlemen in the insemination procedure. We made a diagnosis of what were the main problems in the technique. In the implementation of the technique in the farm from heat detection to the moment of insemination and based on that. We found that there are important failures in semen handling. There are important failures in heat detection and there are important failures in the strategies that we have to get our cows pregnant. 
so with this preliminary diagnosis we focused on three very important aspects. One is to increase the number of cows or the proportion of cows that are detected in heat, either by visual method or accompanied by detection aids, which can increase us between 30 to 40 percent of the effectiveness in this process. When we detect more cows in heat we are more likely to get many more cows pregnant in the herd and when we get more cows pregnant in the herd, it will improve our reproductive indexes that will directly impact the economic parameters and the profitability of our act. The strategies range from the use of markers at the base of the tail, implementing a good system of records of reproductive events and additionally we can use the estrotect cards to detect cows in heat, especially in periods when we do not have the possibility to observe the cows at night or when we are doing other work. The second important step that led us to perform this work today is the handling of semen. Unfortunately many times we receive a product of very good quality from the insemination houses but due to a bad handling for not doing a conscientious work and knowing the impact of a bad handling. We can be taking dead semen to the uterus because we do not use tweezers for semen handling or we do a handling outside the thermos for more than the required time. Additionally we can make a bad thawing of the semen. What is a bad thawing of semen? The bovine semen must be thawed in water at 35 degrees for 45 seconds so that the greatest amount of spermatozoa that are contained inside the frozen semen straw can thaw and remain alive to be able to fertilize the egg released by the cow when she is in heat. Another very important thing is the moment in which we are going to inseminate the cow so the MPM system is still in force in spite of all the progress in reproduction, which means that the cows that we see receiving mating in the morning hours we are going to inseminate them in the afternoon hours and the ones we see in the evening hours we are going to inseminate them the following morning. More or less it is a lapse between 8 to 12 hours after we see the cow receiving the mating for the first time we are going to do that insemination. All this work leads us to inseminate healthy cows, highly fertile cows and to obtain conception percentages and conception rates in our high that make the return in money to be better and better and to be more viable in our cattle raising activity. We are in this event in San Pedro to deal with one of the problems that most affect dairies in Colombia and in general in all tropical countries, the reproductive issue. One of the strong differences that we have in the Colombian case versus some of our neighboring milk producing countries is the reproductive inefficiency that we have in Colombia. We have very long open orders which means that in the end we have lower production averages than our neighbors. This is mainly due to reproductive. Problems of nutritional type, management type, and some technologies that we have not wanted or have not been able to introduce in our country and that other countries already do, as is the case of synchronization. When you get into synchronization issues for insemination, Basically what you are looking for is to improve the reproductive indexes in a farm. All important neighboring countries such as Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, important in milk production, use the tool of synchronization of estrus as a basic way to improve reproduction, synchronizing many of the cows in the early postpartum period, 
to allow insemination in these cows as soon as possible and eventually if we do more inseminations we will have many more pregnancies in Colombia. The synchronization issue is still relegated a little to beef cattle, a little to embryo recipients. And a little in dairy cattle to problem cows, but we have not used it as a management tool. What we intend to do is to show people that we can use heat synchronization in dairy cows to try to generate heat in these cows much faster in the postpartum and eventually achieve much faster pregnancies. If you don't have much faster pregnancies in these calvings it generates two fundamental effects in the dairy. You have more cows giving milk and fewer fox cows. This means higher milk production and of course if you have fewer intervals with fewer days open you also have fewer days in milk. When you have fewer days in milk the production averages increase. So a tool such as semen synchronization in milk cows would allow us to have more cows recently calved and have more cows in the production lot and fewer cows in the worst. This immediately means more milk sold. To achieve this, we have many hormones that we already have in the Colombian market. Some treatments known in other countries such as auxins which is the mixture of NRAS and prostaglandins of very good performance in some countries where nutrition is excellent. In our country the truth is that the results are variable, but we have other hormonal methods based basically on deposit progesterones that can be ear implants in the ear or some vaginal devices that release progesterone for 8 or 9 days. Used in our cows with high levels of anetros, this is one of the tools that we want to put to the consideration of the cattlemen to try to get our cows to warm up quickly, to artificially warm up, to inseminate them and as we do more inseminations we will surely have more pregnant cows in the herd. And that means more cows giving milk, higher milk production and higher average per cow in the herd. To the breeders I would recommend that it is like everything else. I personally make two incentives for good quality milk production on a farm. In the reproduction part. And when I am with the people who are involved in this. Give them some incentives per cow arriving at term of pregnancy as long as they are over some parameters that are put on the farm to say something. If there is low reproduction. There is low milk production and there is low profitability on the farm. It is necessary to make. The cows at least have a calf every 380 to 420 days at the most. in order to have a flow of milk that is profitable for the dairy farm. I found it an interesting workshop, and they should take it up more frequently, because the inseminators especially or those who are on the farm directly, they should have a feedback of what to do, because many times they forget the procedures and protocols to carry out on the farm if they reached a good result. I found the first lecture presented by Sebastian very interesting. Where he shows which are the failures that have been found in the farms and compile those failures and try to make a procedure manual that is close by where those who are involved in this process can read it, the time tells me that they are in the elaboration of that protocol which is very interesting to have it. On the farm, what you have to do is to give feedback to the person in charge of managing not only the insemination, but also the detection of estrus, Let's say there are ways to do it. 
such as giving economic incentives for pregnancies achieved after certain ranges. It gives us some tools to be able to make decisions or determinations on the farm. It seems to me that apart from the fact that you can give us new knowledge, let's say new concerns so that we can raise them here in the conference and when we get to the farm, to the real things, then we can make determinations or decisions or observe analyze what is happening on the farms with respect to what is being dealt with. The subject of inseminations and in other words profitability, like this. Profitability versus insemination. I think it is very important because part of today's dairy cattle raising specifically is costs. Since everything is managed there, if there is a good insemination, a good insemination technique there will be greater production. So it is very important because it gives us some guidelines to follow to improve insemination and having one a good insemination in pregnancies. There will be greater milk production on the farms. The boss I am with, he was saying right now when he came out to the first conference, he said, I see that it is a miracle that we are getting pregnant cows. Because he was in the first conference, I have been in some others, but he saw many deficiencies that exist at the insemination level. The handling of the semen, the handling of the thermos, everything. The whole process is very important so there are many things that have to be done. We have to implement some protocols for the people that are going to inseminate and make sure that things are complied with in order to have good results. The recommendations I also have some knowledge, I studied some livestock technology, is to do things conscientiously and correctly based on the protocols and based on the training and do it consciously. Yes, that would be my recommendation. Try to do things as close as possible to the protocols because the protocols of the things and the presentations are made with the purpose of improving many things. So the advice would be to do things conscientiously and to do it as ethically as possible. We have seen very important topics that are going to help us to improve cattle raising, because many of us have found many new things, many things that we are suddenly forgetting. So they are reminding us, we have to do things right if we want to get ahead with this milk story. I have seen it in a very positive way that, if we do not inseminate well, we are losing a lot of money, because it is as they are saying, that if a cow is not inseminated, and if she does not get pregnant, it will result in less milk. If there is less milk we will have more costs and less profitability. Let us do all things well. That is the essential basis. Well done and be very attentive to the inseminators. The first one was the handling of thermos, straw management. I think it is very good how to work with the tools of artificial insemination equipment. I thought it was very good. Something that we already knew from many years ago. But very good so that suddenly everything that one has suddenly stopped doing is being cleared up. The second one is the issue of reproduction in cows.
which is a shortcoming that all cattlemen suffer because of lack of knowledge of many things, of having better ways of working in the farms so that reproduction can be effective, The third conference, the feeding problem, which is the same as the second one, but trying to improve what is being done here, what other neighbors of ours, like other countries, are doing, and in this we are very behind. We want to have good genetics and all that, but we are not working on the nutritional problem so we have a big deficiency there. Now we are very happy to have 8, 10, 12 cows where we can have 6 or 7 cows. It was better to have 6 or 7 cows with better nutrition than to have 8 or 10 with bad nutrition. And in the end we have a deficiency in what they are producing. In the reproduction itself, and then that is where we have the falls in getting the animal pregnant again. Wow.